Welcome to tutorial on analog electronics and in this tutorial we'll be basically today discussing about the Zener diode. Okay, so the Zener diode basically falls into a class of, I mean falls within a class of, you know, breakdown devices or rather devices that operate in the breakdown region. Okay, so let's just bring up a graph over here which would make things easier for you all to understand. Okay, so there it is. So in this uh, graph, as you can see, this basically is uh, the characteristics, I mean it just basically represents the uh, characteristics of a PN junction diode. Okay, so you can see that it's basically has, you know, two parts, one on the right and on the left. So the part on the right represents the forward characteristics of a PN junction diode. Okay, and now the left one represents the reverse characteristics. So we can see here whenever the uh, p-n junction, I mean whenever a p-n junction diode is basically you know reverse biased down to the breakdown voltage right over here with the red mark okay so whenever uh, the reverse uh, voltage across a uh, p-n junction diode is equal to the I mean equal to the breakdown voltage okay then we shall see a sudden surge of current through the reverse biased p-n junction okay so we discussed its cause back in the previous tutorials where we had discussed breakdown phenomena. Okay, so now Zener diode, okay, is basically a special type of diode that's been, you know, um, designed in order to operate in the breakdown region. So this part, as you can see in this case, where the breakdown occurs, okay, after the breakdown voltage is reached, this part is known as the breakdown region. Okay, so there you go. So now the bre I mean the Zener diode today, which we're going to discuss, operates basically in the breakdown region, and that means this particular uh, device is used in the reverse biased state. Okay, so with that kept in mind, I'll show you the circuit symbol. Okay, so there you go. In case of the circuit symbol, okay, we have uh, the circuit symbol basically uh, looking something like this. So there is a short Z type of structure. Sorry, there it's a bit crooked over there. Okay, so that's better. Yeah, so that is basically how a Zener diode would basically look like. So here we have the cathode of the uh, Zener diode right over here. Okay, and this one's the anode. Okay, this terminal. So we can see here that the Zener diode, okay, is not all that different from a uh, simple PN junction diode. It has a cathode and anode as well, but the, its cathode is being, you know, modified uh, with a Z type of shape, since its name uh, begins with Zener. So this is ba basically, you know, done in order to show that it's basically a Zener diode. Okay, so that's the circuit symbol over here. So having that said, we can say that since the uh, Zener break, I mean, uh, since the Zener diode over here is basically a special type of diode designed in order to operate in the breakdown region. Okay, it has a certain power dissipation capability. That I mean, it, it's just you know denoted by PZM. So that's the maximum Zener power dissipation capability, and also it has a certain value of you know breakdown voltage okay so this breakdown voltage is basically represented by vz okay so now for every uh, zener diode there is a particular value of breakdown voltage and a corresponding maximum power dissipation capability so whenever the zener diode operates in the breakdown region it gets hot due to conduction of sufficient amount of electric current through its reverse biased pn junction okay so now whenever we take a look at this reverse, uh, I mean at this uh, reverse characteristics over here, we see that in the uh, breakdown region, the breakdown voltage almost, you know, remains fixed at this point and the current can increase, you know, no matter what. It, it, it can just increase, you know, sufficiently, but the breakdown voltage doesn't suffer any sort of change. Well, with this property, okay, with this property, we can just use a Zener diode as a voltage regulator. Okay, I'll show you how. So here, if you all would uh, just uh, you know focus your attention uh, towards the circuit over here, which I'm just trying to do I mean just trying to draw over here. Okay, so there you go. We have a okay. 
So let's say that we uh, have a resistance over here, which is our load resistance. We just call it RL. All right, and there is a particular uh, voltage source. Okay, there you go. That's the voltage source over here. Let's say we have a voltage source of about, let's say, 16 volts. Okay, no problem. Now we require that the voltage across this load resistance be kept, okay, constant. All right, so now this could be achieved by a Zener diode. Okay, if we just connect that in parallel with the load resistance, basically. All right, now if we just go back to what we discussed previously, Okay, so we saw from the characteristic that the uh, current can increase no matter what, but the breakdown voltage remains almost constant at its particular point over here. So you can see that whenever uh, the breakdown voltage is reached, okay, the amount of current that should flow through the Zener diode could be, you know, increasingly large, but still the breakdown voltage remains constant at its particular point. So, due to this property, as I said, we could basically utilize the Zener diode in order to maintain, okay, voltage is constant up to, uh, I mean, from, you know, fluctuations uh, from uh, the currents flowing in a circuit. So, it doesn't matter whether uh, the current would increase or decrease once the Zener diode is being operated in the breakdown region it always keeps the voltage constant okay so let's say we have this zener diode as i said uh, let's say our zener diode has a maximum power dissipation capability of let's say 30 milliwatts it's quite small but still as an example we can just take it and let's say it has a breakdown voltage of about let's say 10 volts no problem so here uh, we need to make sure that the Zener diode, of course, you know, as like other devices, I mean like all devices, every uh, particular device has a maximum, uh, you know, handling capacity. So the maximum amount of current that should flow through this Zener diode, okay, once it's being used in the circuit, okay, without damaging it, could be calculated if we would just make this simple calculation over here. So we could do that by just, you know, calculating it this way. So the maximum current, that's IZM, flowing through the uh, Zener diode, okay, would be given by PZM divided by the breakdown voltage, okay. So there you go, if we have 30 milliwatts, okay, so 30 into 10 to the power minus 3 divided by, that's 10. So with this way we'll just get something about 3 milliamps, that's quite small. So we have this Zener diode, okay, with a maximum current handling capacity, okay, I'll just use blue in this case, with a maximum current handling capacity of 3 milliamps. Okay, so there you go. So we're basically uh, having here a Zener diode that can handle, you know, a really small amount of current. Okay, so it's still then, it can basically serve as a uh, voltage regulator. So we shall use this in our circuit. Okay, no problems. So now, uh, Keeping this my, I mean, keeping this in mind that it can handle up to only three milliamps, we need to connect a series resistance, which will basically prevent the current flowing through the Zener diode from rising. So there we go. We connected a resistance right over here. So that's basically our circuit, which we would basically study in this tutorial. So now, in this case, as you can see, that. Our Zener diode, okay, uh, can maximum tolerate, I mean, can tolerate at a maximum of, let's say, 3 milliamps. So whenever, let's say, we connected it this way, okay, once the voltage about these two points, that's A and B right here, okay, I'll use red in this case. So whenever uh, the voltage across these two points, that's A and B marked in red, okay, whenever they would be, I mean, voltage across these points, let's say I call it VAB, whenever this voltage is about greater than or equal to the breakdown voltage, that's 10 volts, okay, the Zener diode would basically operate in the breakdown region, okay. So this is basically... Uh, VAB needs to be greater than or equal to the Zener breakdown voltage, which, which is 10 volts in this case. So if we just imagine this circuit, okay, if we would just imagine this circuit as, let's say, 16 volts, okay, connected without the Zener diodes, then we would have 
something like this okay here would be RS and this would be let's say the load resistance so we need to ensure that the voltage at these points is of course higher than the uh, I mean higher than the uh, Zener breakdown voltage in this case but in this case in order to determine the voltage that, it, that would basically exist here that's VAB we would need both the values of the series resistance as well as the load resistance okay so let's say the load resistance in this case let it be about 3k ohms let's say we want to drive a load or rather keep the voltage across uh, I mean voltage in you know, a constant across a load of 3 kilo ohms but the series resistance needs to be calculated upon the Zener break I mean upon the Zener diodes uh, parameters so we cannot just assume it so in that case we needed to calculate the maximum amount of current through the Zener diode which we did but now since let's assume in that case that our Zener diode is operating in the breakdown voltage let's just assume that so whenever our Zener diode would operate in the uh, breakdown voltage as I said or rather as seen from the graph over here that the voltage across the Zener diode would be fairly constant no matter how the car I mean no matter how much the current would increase so in that case we have the Zener breakdown voltage at 10 volts so that means that the voltage across the Zener diode would remain constant or rather fixed at 10 volts so we just assume the voltage across VAB that's equal to 10 volts so whenever that would happen or rather that would basically take place so we can basically calculate the amount of current that should enter through the load resistance that's IL so here we can just calculate uh, IL something over here okay so here IL would be uh, something like it'll be uh, 10 volts okay divided by 3 kilo ohms okay so that basically gives us a load current of about let's say 3.33 milliamps approximately so we are having a load current of approximately equal to 3.33 milliamps if the Zener diode is actually operating in the breakdown region through the load resistance over here and now we knew that the uh, maximum amount of current that's the IZ or rather the Zener current okay denoted by IZM that would be something about 3 milliamps okay so the total amount of current that should flow through both these arms one through the load resistance and through the Zener diode over here would be equal to that's I equals to IL plus IZ okay so here I would represent the total amount of current coming from the supply voltage source okay so that would be something like 6.33 milliamps or rather I'll just break it up okay no problem so IL would be uh, 3.33 plus this is 3 milliamps so we're getting 6.33 milliamps over here no problem so that's basically what the total amount of current should be okay so now if this total amount of current coming from the supply source is about 6.33 milliamps then the voltage across the load I mean across the series resistance right over here should be uh, about you know 6 volts since we have already 10 volts from the supply source dropping across the uh, Zener diode since it is in the or rather since it's basically operating in the breakdown region so the rest of the 6 volts would occur across the series resistance so we'd have 6 volts dropping across the series resistance so here in this case the current that should flow through the uh, I mean here we have the current that should be uh, actually flowing through the series resistance as well and we know the uh, voltage across the series resistance as 6 volts so we can basically calculate the value of the series resistance as something like this that's RS okay equals to 6 divided by that's the voltage across this series resistance over there divided by the total amount of current that's 6.33 milliamps okay that's 10 to the power minus 3 amps okay so it's basically uh, comes down to something like um, 947 ohms okay so there you go So 947 ohms this is quite an odd value and not industrially available okay so in that case if we would just take it approximately equal to 1k or rather 1 kilo ohms 
and use it as the series resistance right over here. Let's say we take it as 1 kilo ohms, no problem. So in that case, the series resistance would hold a value of approximately 1 kilo ohms in this case and with that value we need to ensure that the voltage across the terminals A and B be greater than or equals to 10 volts. So if we calculate again, okay, assuming the series res resistance as you know 1 kilo ohms, then we're getting something like this. So we have the VAB or rather the voltage across the terminals A and B would be given by the supply voltage, okay, so that's basically uh, 16 volts multiplied by, okay, the load resistance that's uh, 3 k ohms, okay, and divided by the total of the, I mean total resistance right over here, that's the RL plus the series resistance, okay, that's 3 plus 1 which makes 4, so that's 4k down here, so we're basically having something like this, that's 16 multiplied by 3 divided by 4, so that gives us about 12 volts, okay, so therefore we're having the voltage across the terminals A and B approximately equals to 12 volts in this case. So which means that if we initially maintain a voltage across, I mean ac across the terminals A and B at 12 volts then obviously the Zener diode would eventually operate in the breakdown region. So this way if we just construct this circuit, okay, putting it finally as something like this, okay, so there's our Zener diode, okay, no problem, and here is our load resistance of 3 kilo ohms and our series resistance of 1 kilo ohms and we have a supply voltage source of 16 volts, no problem. So if it's that way, I mean if it in this way we make the arrangement then our circuit right over here would give us uh, approximately a voltage or rather a fixed voltage of about 10 volts across the load resistance right over here. So having said that we basically uh, conclude our session of discussion uh, on the basic construction of a regulated power supply with Zener diode or rather basically constructing a Zener diode uh, as a voltage reg regulator in a particular uh, application and the Zener diodes as well. So hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and don't forget to catch us next on our forthcoming tutorial. So till then it's a just a goodbye for now and thanks for watching.